right, everybody, welcome back to the HDI live stream. I'm so excited to be back here hosting. You got me, what, three weeks in a row? Pretty crazy. Um, as always, a really big shout out to our sponsor, Robert Half. Uh, Robert Half is uh, is the group that, that keeps, uh, keeps your business running. They provide you with skilled IT professionals, the people that you need to, to keep the lights on. So um, view that uh, web link at the top of the screen. You'll be able to find great candidates um, for the open roles that you have. Um, or if you are the candidate, go out there. There are open roles available. So um, whatever your needs are, Robert Half, Robert Half has your solution. Um, they're also a great repository, a knowledge repository. So if you're looking how to retain that talent, if you're looking uh, how to stand out during that onboarding process, um, salary guides, all kinds of really cool stuff. So again, link up at the top there. Please make sure you go check out the guys and, guys and gals and people uh, over at Robert Half. So with that being said, let's jump into today's show. I am so very excited to be chatting today with Don Simmons. Uh, Don is a lifelong leader of best practices that evolve the customer and employee experience. She believes innovation happens at the heart of focus on people, the intersection of connected caring and continuous improvement. Don's unique life experience as a 9-11-01 IT support professional, a COVID-19 major incident management business optimization professional, a COVID long haul survivor, um, this all fuels her focus on making a difference. So she curates jobs and career network, executive women's leadership network to connect winning business professionals to ideas. And she also manages business communities for human resources. IT service management, artificial intelligence, intelligence, and cybersecurity. Don, how do you do it all? <laughs> it's strange because really all that I've done in life has got to this point. So I I laugh because when we talk this like nine one one, it was a not a comical experience, but it certainly was a framing experience for all of our lives. I was working for a company back in 911 mm -hmm. uh, for Sun Microsystems. Best company culture I've ever, ever known. Oh, yeah. And we have offices in World Trade Center building too. Oh, wow. So our whole life, the and I was in the help desk support operation um our whole life changed we had to immediately go into matters and employee matters in a way that you're not really prepared for until you face the crisis of the office that your employee has just been evaporated and the customers to serve are in that building and how do you take care of the people the technology and the process the good news for us at 911 is that we were able to detect the event early enough that we were able to dispatch equipment out to allow people to work from anywhere. Within a day or so, we were able to turn everything over from a complete loss of building resources for ourselves and our customers. That's incredible. Very framing experience. Yeah, I can. But that, that set forth a chain of events that really connected all the things that I talk about. So we went from Y2K where we're preparing for, you know, this whole decimal point issue of what <laughs> happens when, you know, things become dot zero zero yep. um, to 911. <laughs> we went from 911, the post economic recovery from the event of 911 mm -hmm. affected all business, particularly those businesses that were the trader. Um, so we went into, as a company, we went into uh, and I started with Johnson Bear Network and the recruiting networks at that time. We had they cut by 20% of the workforce. But when you're in IT and hospital comes in, after you have costs, your products cut. So my task was 50% of the staff. I said that the Jones and Green Network and the Recruiters Network provide sourcing services. Because the people that I worked with, they were awesome and they deserved that support. So I helped them all yeah. through LinkedIn. I helped them find um, 
didn't intend to do it. It was the right thing to do because I had done, when Sun was growing, we'd yeah. done so much to attract people. So 911 really helped become a framework for connecting people. If people really matter, you do those things that make sure people matter. Um, after that, of course, that was two, 2009 when yeah. we basically dealt with the post economic Right. Where I was, uh, social media had done a study of the most influential recruiters in social media. And don't you know, account number one, number one most influential recruiter in the media. The odd thing about that is, I was doing this in addition to my IT job, and I wasn't doing it because I wanted to get place people in jobs. Yeah. I did it because people mattered. So I helped them to find out that is growing and thriving to this day. Yeah. That helped us when the pandemic started. Jeez. So in the pandemic time, enter the challenges of jobs loss, security increase, and the need for agents and men. So when the pandemic started, I was working on a, a implementation of ServiceNow for a grocery store, and they had a critical need to deploy major incident management. Then we had major incidents in the history of the company before I joined them. She's and we were told by the president at the time that your business cannot go down. Therefore, major incident Ooh. needed to stand up. This was the beginning of predictive elements and major incident management because we needed to create an easy way to identify what was happening in an environment and how do we need to act on it? How yeah. do we need to communicate? And oh, by the way, you might lose an entire support center or business center by a COVID impact. So completely different, really quick, but people still mattered. We just had to lose technology and keep in the heart what people were really feeling and doing and responding to. They weren't used to working from home. They'd never done it in the history of their business. But all of a sudden, we had to stand up support operations to do that. Well, I think, you know, awesome segue into kind of the meat of what I wanted to talk to you about is, you know, when the the experience shifted to digital, I think a lot of people, especially very technology based people, didn't really know how to look at the human experience, the human element of the tech of technology, and how like that technology was landing in the hands of not only the people, the workforce, but just how the business operates. So, I think it's amazing that your kind of background kind of really did prepare you for this this big moment, but. Tell me, one of the things we were chatting about in sort of our pre-call or pre-show meeting was, you know, how you have to look at, you know, AI, how you have to look at predictive intelligence with an eye of human experience. And so, you know, when you're implementing these, you know, major lift implementations, kind of how do you approach it and how do you talk to these extremely brilliant technical people about experience and the perception of experience? The tech people are very good at deploying technology, and we've got to let them do that. But we've also got to embed the employee in the experience. We have to understand how it looks. Right. Predictive intelligence is an example. Um, we're using these technologies every day, and it benefits us. The employee experience or the customer experience is why we love shopping at Amazon, because Amazon knows that a holiday's coming up, and I usually buy this kind of thing. So, oh, by the way, let me suggest these other things. Or, um, it knows that it'll take X days to get to me. They've got supply chain worked out, the demand worked out. They know my profile and they know what I'm looking for. I love that they find ways to serve me well. We don't think about it. For sure. It just is handled. Yeah. Uh, predictive intelligence in the realm of post pandemic uh, business, it touches all business. Uh, predictive intelligence has been used, of course, for marketing cycles to improve the customer experience. Totally. But employee experience is just as much an issue. If you focus on good employee experience, you're focus on what they do best. 
Right. Let the is the language that people are using to report their experience and bubble that up into what is impacting to our business and how can we act on that and how can we create the ticket, route the ticket, and start working it before our customers experience it. That's part of what the predictive intelligence engine and the service now or other business dashboards are helping to do is it's taking a dashboard of authorities. How do we need to act on them? Right. What's impacting the business? And it's using artificial intelligence to determine hotspots and technology impacts that impact before the customer experiences it. So we've come a long way since 911, where we had to do this all manually and try to look through a spreadsheet right. or a CMDB to find something. Today, the system navigates that so you can focus on managing people and awesome. impact of people. I the love that is a great summary and a really good just love that that's the focus and you know to your point I mean just to kind of harp on what you said I mean people don't know what they don't know and so if you can tell them what they need to know before they realize they need to know it I mean what a huge win and, and you know what what an accomplishment especially to your point on the service side I mean yes it's great when I get served at, I, I'm one of those people that like is easily influenced you serve me an ad and it's like Yes, of course I need this, you know, pet dandruff brush that magically whatever does, like, <laughs> whatever they say it does, I'm, I'm in. But, you know, on, on, the, on the service side, I mean, there's so much. I mean, I am trying to, you know, we're right now, you know, we're working on a project and, and trying to learn a couple new pieces of technology. And it's me just trying to out and Google and try to figure it out. And if I could just be able to sort of put in my brain what's what I'm trying to say into the computer, like how I need it to know what I'm thinking because I don't know the answer and I don't know what to even look for. And so it sounds like you're on sort of trying to help soften that problem. Well, the use cases are incredible. Of course you have business problems you're trying to solve every day. To be able to do a connected search that searches across knowledge articles and tickets and incidents and requests and puts all that together into a package of is this what you're looking for based upon what you usually look for right you can discover answers that you can expect sooner now imagine the power of that we're talking about COVID, and COVID from an it perspective it's had impact um but if you're in the healthcare arena um I'll talk to the healthcare, the health side, going to the human side of COVID. COVID impacts business operations. You can take a whole team down by having a couple of key team members go out yeah. due to COVID. Uh, their medical team, if they happen to be one of the unfortunate ones, um, their medical team is trying to search across a bunch of unstructured data to try to figure out how and how many people are impacted by these symptoms, these impacts, we can start to influence recovery, investigation, resolution. We can improve people's quality of life with well-connected AI in the healthcare arena. Yeah, incredible. That's very exciting to me. Um, we can improve the way we serve our customers, but we can improve quality of life too. And that's where it gets darn exciting. So when IT people talk about IT service management. First, first misnomer is it's no longer IT service management. It is service management, and business streaming are all trying to solve. Can we enable the use of technology to solve more problems and serve more customer demands? Incredible. I just this I could talk about this topic all day long. I wish we had more than fifteen minutes, um, and it flies by. <laughs> But Don, um, tell people who are passionate, are looking for help, whatever it may be, how can they find you? What's the best way to engage your your help, your knowledge, your services? The best way to engage my services, I'm a big LinkedIn proponent because I believe it's the best way we can provide leads in business, opportunities for jobs, and many employers. For example, Robert Half, one of the best recent um, stories that I had was from Robert Half. 
I worked on a hospital project with them uh-huh. where we were enabling their IT processes. One of the best projects I've seen because the team was committed, the processes were improved, and we were able to stand up hospitals that were challenged by lack of resource and COVID. There's so much we can do by understanding how we connect and bring our best selves with technology. You can connect to me through LinkedIn. I also have a website where I talk about business use cases and odd sorts of things on dawncsimmons.com. You can join me there. I share some best practices, some ideas, and some occasional rants on technology. (laughs) Love it. I love it, love it. Well, guys, the... Both her LinkedIn as well as the website, both right there, right below her image on the <laughs> right there. So please reach out to Dawn. I promise you, great conversation. I've really enjoyed everything I've had with her. Um, to the HDI community, thank you so much for listening in. Um, quick programming note, we are taking the Labor Day week off, so there will be no show next week. But uh, we will be back on September 14th. Uh, your fearless leader, Tom, will be taking over again. And uh, we will uh, see you soon. Thanks so much, everybody. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks, Patty.